there are many ways to place APs for a wireless network design. This is dependent on many factors. Some factors may include type of devices to be used on the network, such as data, voice, or RTLS, placement constraints where APs can be mounted versus placements that are not allowed. For example, the customer may require the APs need to be out of sight. Areas where signals are restricted. Signals may need to be kept within a boundary, such as a military complex. Construction constraints. Uh, building materials may be a factor. And there are more. APs should be powered for the device to eliminate near-far issues. We'll use 18 milliwatts. We also will need to know the following. The number of clients to be supported. We'll use 100 clients. The number of clients allowed per AP. We'll support up to 15 clients per AP. The bands to be utilized, 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. If 5 gigahertz will be used, what channels are available for use? We'll use the 5 gigahertz utilizing the Uni 1 and Uni 3 bands. We can deduct a minimum of 7 APs will be needed to support 100 clients, with each AP limited to 15 clients. For our example, we will be designing a data network. Our coverage area will exclude the stairways and elevators. At this time, make sure you're in the Planner tab and the initial setup of the survey has been completed. Select an AP and place it in a corner. This will not be the final position for this AP. It will give us an idea of where the first AP will be placed. Choose a select tool. This is the arrow at the top left of the screen. This will keep us from dropping any unwanted additional APs on the floor plan. Make any necessary property changes by right-clicking the AP and selecting AP Properties. We are not going to use the 2.4 GHz band for this exercise. Uncheck the Enable setting under the 2.4 tab. We will need to change the 5 GHz properties by clicking the 5 GHz tab. Click the properties under Antenna. Select the Mix Mode Radio button. Next, select 20 MHz channel and check the Block Act and Short Guard Interval settings. These settings will be specific for the network wireless environment. When finished, click OK. Next, click OK for the AP properties. Next, click the Refresh button to see the heat map for the placed AP. Measure out from the AP to your predetermined RSSI value. We'll use NEG67 DBM. This value should be agreed to with your customer prior to the design. The customer should have this value for you, but they may lean on you to determine this value. It should represent the devices being used on the network and should be derived from the manufacturer documentation. Move the cursor away from the AP until the RSSI reaches NEG67 DBM. Remember this is a negative scale and we are using 5 GHz. This will be the placement of our first AP. By placing our AP in this location, we know it will reach back to our initial corner location. Click and hold the AP to drag it to the new location. Click Refresh again and move the cursor to the previous AP corner. Make sure the 5 GHz signal is NEG67 dBm or better.
You can make the AP a default AP by right-clicking the AP and selecting Default AP. This will make each AP placed after this AP an exact copy of it. This allows us to make only minimal changes to the properties for each subsequent AP. A new default AP can be selected at any time. Look for the next AP location. Remembering best practice is to not place APs in hallways. Hallway placements greatly increase the likelihood of co-channel interference. Double the distance of the first location and bring your cursor in 20% of the distance from where doubling NEG67 dBm reaches. This is where the second AP will be placed. Remember this is for a data network design. Clicking the Select tool is always a good practice to eliminate the chance of dropping an unwanted AP on the floor plan. Next, click Refresh. After placing the second AP, check co-channel interference for this location by clicking the channel of the AP on the left side of the screen. Adjust the RSSI value on the right side of the screen by moving to the bottom of the scale. When a hand appears, click and drag up to NEG82 dBm. This has our value for co-channel interference. If the heat of the two APs on the plan is overlapping, there is co-channel interference. Coverage of each AP can be seen by clicking on the plus sign next to the channel and selecting each channel individually. Change the properties for the 5 GHz by right-clicking on the AP and selecting AP Properties. Click on the 5 GB tab. At a minimum, you will need to change the channel. There should not be any co-channel interference after changing the channel because our APs should reside on different channels. Co-channel interference is something that needs to be checked once APs begin reusing channels. Repeat the process for adding APs until all APs have been placed. Remember to check for co-channel interference when reusing channels. After placing the remaining APs, we discovered channel 36 has been reused. We will apply our previous steps to check for co-channel interference.
We need to change AP7 to channel 153 to avoid co-channel interference with AP1. You'll also want to check your design by using Airwise.